An industry veteran and a pioneer of customer success management, Dave Blake founded Client Success in 2014 to combine his experience and thought leadership in a customer success management platform that enables SaaS companies to deliver world-class retention and growth. Before founding Client Success, Dave was vice president of strategic accounts for Omniture, then led the global enterprise account management organization for Adobe's digital marketing business, leading a team of over 115 account managers worldwide and overseeing a $420 million book of business. As a customer success manager myself, I've taken so much inspiration from Dave's philosophy of designing authentic and personalized customer experiences and delivering those experiences through an internal culture of customer success. It is truly my pleasure to welcome to the Boundless Virtual Stage Client Success Founder and CEO, Dave Blake. Hi, Dave. Hi, Kristen. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So great to have you. So great to have you. So I'm really looking forward to hearing your insights about creating a culture of customer success within an organization. But first, would you uh, like to talk about client success and what inspired you to start the organization? You bet. First, uh, huge congrats to the Nutshell team and this amazing summit in Boundless 2020. So honored to be here with such a great team and great guests. So thanks for having Thank me. Thank you for being here. We're thrilled. Well, I, I'm coming to you from uh, Silicon Slopes in Utah. This is where we're based. And so we say hello from Utah. And, um, you know, my background really, I've been a customer success uh, guy for most of my career, as, as you mentioned. I was uh, at uh, had an amazing experience being at a company called Omniture, which is, which was a um, a unicorn, if you will, back in the day of web analytics, and I joined there and went through their hyper growth and then the IPO and, and acquisition by Adobe, and really was early on building and scaling customer success teams. Uh, this was back in the early uh, mid two thousands. Um, we were fortunate to be bought by Adobe where I came over and built the uh, and scaled the team there as well. And we were taking care of the top companies around the world. So from Apple to eBay to Microsoft to Sony. Um, and we were just really for fortunate to have a great team. But it was interesting because I was told very early on that, uh, Dave, you're in charge of strategic accounts and you will never lose a strategic account. And so you can imagine the pressure that that put on, uh, put on uh, me and the team. Um, and, but, but it was a challenge we, we, um, that we took gladly. And we did really well. But it was despite the fact that we, uh, we had no solutions. We, had, we were kind of cobbling together insights and analytics and figuring this out on our own and um, never really had a solution that was very tailored to our needs in the, on the customer success side. And so after a decade between those two companies, I left Adobe and built uh, and founded Client Success. And that's what we do. We're, we're a solution. We're a platform that helps customer success teams manage their customers, measure customer health and ma maximize that post sales revenue. Yeah. And so that's uh, that's how we, we got here. And we're really excited about the journey and, and the space we're in um, delivering solutions in this space. Amazing. Well, it's so incredible what you've done, and uh, we're always really excited to, f to follow you along as a company. But um, for, for anybody watching who doesn't have a customer success operation at their company and might be unfamiliar uh, with the term, um, CS essentially means supporting customers so that they can achieve their desired outcomes. Um, we found yeah. it at Nutshell to be a significant uh, revenue driver because it uh, impacts retention as well as account expansion. At what point do you think a company should start investing in customer success or make that part of their process? Yeah, great question. I think early, you know, I think more and more you see companies who are investing early. Um, the, a key part of any strategy as you, as you build from startup to scale up is to be able to engage customers, to learn from customers, to deliver a great customer experience, and then try to figure out how to make that repeatable. And so, um, whereas many, many years ago, you might see uh, client or customer success teams being built out farther down in the, in the startup journey. Nowadays, you see some of them being um, one of the earliest team members that they, that they have. And, and again, it's because those first customers are so critical to learn from and, and um, align with and innovate around that customer success teams um, help you enable to do that in, in a yeah. powerful way. 
That's great. And um, I mean, coming from a, a background where I um, started customer success here at, here at Nutshell, what kind of metrics yeah. were you tracking in the beginning? Or what, do you, what could you recommend to some listeners who might not have a customer success initiative that um, could kind of help sink their teeth into the process and get them going? Yeah, great question. Uh, we, we look at it as like a, this customer success maturity model. And usually very early on, um, the, the metrics and the insights that you're gathering are fairly basic um, because you're uh, really focus more on engaging that customer and validating your product yeah. um, as well as retention. And so f- starting out, it's everything from simple metrics around um, uh, around product usage and engagement, um, simple metrics around retention um, and growth, and even to, to some extent, the very basic ones about red, yellow, green, having a basic health score that says, if I look at one customer, how do I determine if this customer is progressing in a healthy trajectory or are they at risk? Yeah. Um, and so I always say start with some of the basic metrics and then and really learn those metrics for your company because every company is different and then expand um, from there. That's great advice. Um, now you've said that this is the age of the customer. Uh, great companies yeah. have always put their customers first. So what's different about this particular moment in time that we're living in? I think because the customers have more choices and they have more power, if you will. Um, the, the way that solutions are built right now is that they're more and more nimble of, um, of being able to get up and running and using, which is a very positive thing for the customer experience. Uh, but it's also a challenge because they just as easy as they um, are able to get up and running on your platform, they're easy to switch and, and go and get up and running very easily on another platform. So I think the, the, the breadth of solutions out there and, um, and the, the number of choices that, that customers have really empowers them and puts a, a bigger um, re- a role of responsibility for us as, as SaaS companies or technology companies or any company to really align to their needs and deliver um, to their needs over time. Oh, that's a great point. And I know um, competitive analysis is something that a lot of sales teams are, are spending time with. Um, yeah. how, how much time do you, you know, encourage your CSMs to be spending learning about other platforms that might compete with your own to have those manage those conversations? You know, not a lot, to be honest with you. Um, we certainly respect the competitive landscape, but I think it's, uh, we tend to focus on us more. We feel like that if, if we reach our potential, we focus on the areas we can improve, those things that we're doing well where we can double down, we feel, feel like that's the best, uh, the best um, route and path. I think sometimes you could get so focused on the competitive landscape that you almost morph and you start to become a follower of the competitors mm. versus really having conviction and having a vision and having your, your team uh, focus on reaching the best potential that you can be versus worrying too much about the competitive landscape. Mm. So focus on where you shine. Yes, I love exactly. That. <laughs> Great way to say it. Great. Um, so this ties in today, into today's theme of above and beyond. Uh, we need to not just meet our customers high demands and their expectations, but also exceed them. Um, How should our viewers be thinking about this challenge and uh, what actually leaves an impression on today's buyers? Yeah, I always encourage individuals and teams and companies to have very high expectations, have a very um, lofty uh, vision for what you want, what is possible with the customer, and then um, be relentless about um, executing that and delivering on that. Um, it's not about meeting expectations, especially in a very competitive environment, especially when it's the age of the customer. You really want to deliver extraordinary experiences. Um, and that's not one, organi- one team. It's, it's a broader uh, piece of the organization. Um, and that doesn't happen overnight, but it's picking a few things that you'll do really well. It's being um, very focused on um, listening to the customer and engaging with them. And then, and then as you said, uh, double down on those things where you shine. Yeah. Uh, we focus a lot on the negative aspects of our business and why we're um, maybe not doing as well. But the, the, the best companies are also very good at identifying where they excel and they're able to, uh, um, uh, to, to double down on that and, and, and broaden that across their business. Yeah, listening is incredibly important. Yeah. Uh, de- definitely something that um, has taken even, you know, I'm a great listener, but really, really slowing down and meeting the customer where they're at is, um, I mean, 
easier said than done, right? So yeah. it's, a, it's a huge, uh, huge success. Um, yeah. So what is the relationship between customer experience and customer success? How do these two concepts interact in your view? Yeah, I think they're starting to, to um, combine and overlap uh, significantly, and which is a positive thing. And the way that I, I describe it is that um, I, I look at customer experience as being the entire um, experience that anybody has had with your company from first even hearing about the company, from, mm -hmm. from being a, uh, getting acquainted from them and, and understanding who they are, all the way through the, through the lifetime of that relationship. So very first touch to the, to the very um, last touch yeah. uh, of, of the cu customer experience. Um, and so it's the every interaction that they have with your business. Um, and I kind of feel like that that's, th there's part of it where I, you say it's part of the design. Um, customer experience is about designing an, an extraordinary experience. And customer success is about delivering to that experience mm -hmm. and, um, and ensuring that you're, you're delivering and, and, um, and exceeding that experience. And so it's kind of de design versus delivery is how I look at that. But they both come together, and when that does in a, in a positive way, it's it's magic. I love I'll, that. I'll give you an example, yeah, if please. you don't mind. No, go right ahead. Um, I'm sure there's some some fans out there uh, who are Disney fans, and Disney is such a great company in the sense that they really know um, how to de develop an extraordinary experience, a magical, as they would say, experience, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> deliver to that. And so, if you think about the Disney experience. Um, they are. They spend so much time really understanding how to deliver an extraordinary experience, but the rubber hits the road when somebody pays for a ticket and walks through that turnstile into the park. In that case, the cast members, as they as they refer to them, <laughs> they're about delivering on that experience. So I, I would say, you know, all the work that goes on behind the scenes to to create the experience is customer experience. And the cast members are playing essentially like a customer success role once you get through the park. Um, you've purchased, you're now a customer, and now they need to deliver on that experience. And that's, that would be a, a great a analogy that I would, I would pose to the audience today. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for that. Um, that's, that's a wonderful analogy. So uh, interest in growing a customer success team has, it has grown exponentially over the past uh, 10 or so years. Even teams that have invested in customer success, um, they can fall into this trap of treating customer success as a non-business business critical, like a luxury. Do you tend to agree with this or do you see CS transitioning into be, being more of a, a business critical role? I'm a little biased here, as you can imagine, but uh... No, I think, I think the word is out that customer success is the mission critical role. Um, evidence is that you see a customer success manager, that title, that role being one of the fastest growing uh, titles and roles in, in tech uh, based on from LinkedIn surveys and, and, and reports. Um, and so CEOs are starting to take notes of not only that it's essential, but it's powerful. Um, it's gone from a, a mindset of, Customer success is something that we need to have because it's the it's the popular thing to do. To where now companies and CEOs are saying, no, we we this this can be a critical part of our business, not just to retain customer, but being a critical part of that growth engine within the business. Mm -hmm. And that's an exciting time to be able to see that that change and that evolution of, of customer success significantly out there in in technology and SaaS. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's um, next up. Let's discuss how to create a culture of customer success, which you've been very, you know, successful doing in your career. Because um, I think what we'll be hearing throughout the day is that if you serve your team well, they'll serve your buyers well. Um, yeah. So what are the key elements of creating a culture of customer success that radiates out to your customers? Yeah, I think the first thing is to realize that customer success is really a team sport. Um, it requires everybody. You may have the customer success team on the front line. Uh, driving the execution and um, being this, the uh, point of contact with the customer, but they're relying on everybody around them and, and flanked on side by side, shoulder to shoulder to, to really take care of that customer. So whether it's the product team and delivering an amazing product experience, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the marketing team and making sure that we are, um, we're marketing to the right customers and we, that we understand the ideal customer profile and we're, we're attracting the right customers. 
um, because I could, if I'm tr attracting the wrong customers, that could quickly lead to churn. And there's very little that you can do on the back end if, you, if you've attracted bad fit customers. It's the sales team in setting proper expectations. Yeah. Um, it's the support team for executing. And so the first thing is like being able to, to unite as a broader organization, as a, uh, an entire company to be aligned and focused on the customer. The second thing is to be aligned by via KPIs and objectives is there's a level of accountability and transparency that drives this behavior. And then I think the third one is to um, celebrate that side of the business. A lot of times we focus on the, the negative side of, of that business and we're focused on churn customers um, we're, and, but we don't, we don't talk about the, the, our successful customers. We don't infuse um, insights about why they're successful and celebrate renewals and wins and, and those types of things. So I think it's critical as a company to um, unite on execution and KPIs, but also unite in celebrating and recognizing the tremendous impact that, that customer success has on the organization. I love that. And, you know, like, like listening, I think um, keeping a feed loop, uh, feedback loop pretty tight is another thing that's kind of easier said than done. And I know you called out like celebrating and a few other things to bring in the, the full team so that you really do spread that culture of success. Are there any practical tips that you could share with our audience today on how to close the feedback loop just to make it a little bit tighter and kind of increase that message of like we're all in this together? I have two that I'll share with you. Um, one is to, to shorten the gap between the data. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we're capturing data in real time, but it takes weeks or months to be able to, to um, disseminate that data and to put it into action. And so one of the things is I recommend is try to quickly um, let that data flow to, um, to the company. So for example, we have different methods of, of feedback and insights that we get from our customers. We have those posted immediately into a Slack channel. So immediately our entire team can go and, and, and kind of get a really good pulse on the customer health, customer successes and customer challenges. And they're able to act on it um, appropriately and very quickly. So surface the right kind of data is, is something that a platform like ours does, but then infusing that quickly throughout the organization is important. I'll give one other um, uh, tip that, that we learned at Adobe. And that was, um, Delivering, building and designing and delivering a, a great uh, customer experience, it starts with empathy. And a lot of times um, th um, individuals throughout the organization don't, don't have that daily interaction with the customer. And so they don't have that empathy that is required to really um, deliver to their solutions. At Adobe, we created a solution, a, a program called the Customer Immersion Program. And what that required is it required all the executives to um, step into the shoes of customers, to use our product, to, under, to read the contracts, to listen and reply to support calls, to speak with customers, and to, to go through this, this process where all of them stepped into the customer's shoes and really realized at that time that we were really difficult to do business with. And that program that required all of the executive leaders and all the senior leaders to go through that and develop that empathy was probably one of the biggest um, things to change yeah. the culture um, to focus on the customer. And you see the results um, today is, is one of the, the key indicators of, of making that change, um, the amazing change that Adobe has done over the years. So create that empathy, take people on site, yeah. get them on phone calls, and you'll see that they'll care, they'll be able to have a different level of care and design and delivery after they have that firsthand empathy. Ooh. Great advice. I absolutely love that. I took down a few notes myself up here. That's great, Dave. Um, so when I was beginning to research how to successfully implement a, a customer success department at Nutshell, I loved leveraging the free webinars that Client Success puts out. There's some amazing content in there, um, just as a resource for inspiration and kind of some things to think about in our own business, and then um, gave me some great jumping off points um, to some of the Nutshell-specific problems I was trying to solve. So I would love to hear from you what other recommendations do you have for resources for aspiring CSMs or maybe new CSMs um, in addition to, you know, the, the stellar content that you and your team are putting out. Um, where, you know, for example, where do you turn when you're looking for a little bit of advice about, you know, what, what's new with the customer and customer trend? That's a great question, and thank you. We, we, we try to put out great content for people to learn, and I'm glad to hear that you've, you've, uh, you've benefited from that. You know, I think it's the one beautiful thing about this customer success space 
is the community is amazing. And you have professionals who are so generous with their time. Um, they love to lead out. They love to share best practices. They love to, to commiserate sometimes as well. Um, I really get inspiration and, um, and additional knowledge from just engaging with the community. Yeah. So whether you're a frontline um, CSM somewhere, you're brand new, there, is, there are many leaders out there who would love to mentor you, who are doing great things, they're innovating, um, and they, they would love to engage with you and give you advice. And so my, my advice is to engage in the community, not be afraid to, to jump in. Uh, and it's, sometimes it's give to get, sometimes you give um, and you contribute to the community and you get so much more. And so for me, it's really engaging and being out in the community with customers, with great leaders, with great frontline CSMs and, and learning how they're innovating and how they're, um, they're navigating uh, their careers and, and this space. I love that. Now, when you say, um, you know, reaching out to your community, is that a local community or an online network? I guess, where can you, where can you direct um, us folks who are looking for, for our next steps? Yeah, a little both. So most, uh, most cities these days and, and um, have local customer success meetups. And so I would, I would go out on meetup.com or others and, and find out where, where um, if you have a local meetup in your city, okay. if not, I pull together leaders in your city and, and, <laughs> and CSMs and, and create one That's great. <laughs> because it's not that hard. And you'll find this hunger, this, this thirst for knowledge and networking and knowledge sharing. And it's really easy to start your own meetup. And, uh, yeah. you know, there's people like I love to go and speak and contribute and help. Um, and I'm always happy to do that. And there's many other um, professionals, customer success professionals who love to engage and help as well. So I think local meetups, um, there are also big, there's other conferences in the space. We host one that's specifically for leaders here in Silicon Slopes at Sundance Resort called the CS100 Summit. That has become the premier um, conference for customer success leaders. And so leaders looking for our networking and knowledge sharing, we invite you there, but there's other conferences out there as well. Um, but then also just engage online through social media. Uh, whether it be Twitter or LinkedIn, there's really engaging and rich dialogues happening in those me those mediums that you can jump in, ask questions, provide feedback and input, and really uh, gain a lot of value out of out of those communities. Hmm. That's great, great tips. Um, and I know as um, as folks who are in the customer success world, we're people people. We love the face to face. So I love the call out to you know starting a local meetup. I think that's fantastic. But um, for those of us who are a little bit more introverted, are there any great authors that you love or are kind of on your radar? Or any kind of materials that you're um, excited about right now? You know, I think there's there's a lot of uh, different ones. And again, I tend to go to uh, to the community and. Um, I, I kind of like the the um, the more nimble content that is out there in LinkedIn, and so things like David Sakamoto or um, or Julie Persofsky at Winning by Design, or some of these that are um, individuals who are great thought leaders, and they're writing content, they're delivering insights. Mm -hmm. That's where I tend to go. Versus, um, you know, there are certainly books out there, but it's still fairly er early stage, and so. Yeah. I'm more for hey, let's read what the content um, on on uh, you know that is that is current and more nimble and engaging those conversations where real time innovation is happening is, mm. is where I like to turn. Um, you know, there's a couple others. I think out, even outside this space, there's um, there's books that I think that have been great. There's there's been one I think by Chris Dixon. It's called the Effortless Experience. That kind of book is great. I think for aligning CS teams, it's not necessarily a customer success focused one, but um, uh, Patrick Leonci has created one called The Advantage that's great about leading, um, aligning leadership teams or, or, or regular teams in, in execution. There's some great books out there that I think that are um, that apply to growing and scaling customer success teams or, or delivering an extraordinary experience, but maybe not under the title of customer success um, per se. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm I'm familiar with the um, the effortless experience. I've read it myself. It's an amazing read. Um, yeah. Could you uh, offer our readers a quick synopsis of kind of what an effortless experience looks like? 
Yeah, it's just that the, the the fact that um, you want your your customers to be able to engage with you with as little effort as possible. Yeah. That they don't you hide the complexity, you absorb the complexity, and you focus on delivering an amazing experience, and and, and so that your customer can engage without that friction that you might have um, um, in uh, that you might have in in some business. Another one that uh, that is great is a book called Inside Out. That is uh, all about how do I um, how do I look at how I design my experience from the customer's perspective rather than our internal perspective. Mm. That's a very inspiring book as well. It's um, Carrie Bodine wrote that book, and it, it really changes the dynamic of saying, "Hey, when we sit down in our annual strategy meetings, we're so focused on what our strategy is, we never even look through the lens of the customer." Mm. And trying to change that paradigm to say, let's let's really understand, listen, to, and listen to the customer, and then align our strategy based on their needs uh, and deliver that effortless experience that uh, Chris Dixon suggested as well. Yeah, that's great advice for those of us who are having a hard time listening to the customer. That could be a good place to uh, a good place to start. Yeah. Um, Dave, we do have some uh, customer questions. Would you be open to uh, fielding a few of those? You bet. Bring them on. All right, awesome. So first one is, um, how would you describe the relationship between customer success and sales teams? I think they're critical uh, to have a very close relationship. Um, the, the way I look at it, the sales team is, it, it, they are setting great expectations up front. They're closing good fit customers. And there should be this seamless transition from sales to success. Um, and, and at that point, the, the sales team, we don't want the sales team to, to, to just hand it over and leave. Uh, we should understand that we're both in this together. Yeah. Um, we both own the, the customer relationship. We're, and together, working closely, we can achieve much more better results over time. We can grow that account and we can uh, deliver a great experience. Um, and so I, I've seen adversarial relationships between sales and customer success at time. But I've also seen when those two teams really understand their roles and responsibilities and how they work in tandem to deliver for the customer. And what you see is you see both sides, both teams really excel and, and, and um, produce excellent results. And ultimately, the customer wins at a much higher degree as well. Awesome answer. That's great. Um, we've got one more. Um, how can I engage senior customers into using web platforms efficiently? This is from Julia from the Q&A chat. Uh, to, uh, uh, to use web platforms more efficiently? Yes. S more senior customers. Um, you know, I think that um, customers will use whatever platforms that you deliver that provide value to them. A lot of times we, um, we talk about low touch experiences or high touch experiences at the end of the day the customer just wants their their objectives met yeah. and they want they want the solution to work and they um and they want all that friction removed and so i think if, if we want them to use online web um, platforms then we need to make sure that those those are providing true value to them yeah. and if they will they'll they'll use them and um if they don't they they won't and so i think that's the main thing is is take a step back and say, are you delivering a tangible value or a tangible outcome through that platform? And do the customers recognize that? If not, I would take a step back and, and think of a different strategy. Yeah, certainly. Okay, they are rolling in now, Dave. I got another one for you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you're doing great. <laughs> do you have a, um, let's see here, a suggestion for a customer that is so caught up in their struggle, they seek the short-term fix instead of the long-term solution? Great question from Trevor. Yeah, Trevor, great question. Um, that's, that's a challenge all the time. Um, and um, that's a dynamic, you know, and I think that the, the challenge there again is, is are you aligned to their objectives? They may have a short-term objectives that, that they're pressured to do. And anybody who's in that situation where I've got short-term ob objectives that I have to achieve in order to, to achieve my long-term objectives, you have to understand those and you have to have that empathy and you have to seek to understand and find ways to help solve those, those short-term term objectives. And I think if, if the customer understands that you get them and that you're genuinely and authentically trying to help them solve their short-term needs as well as their long-term needs, that you'll have a successful partnership that will flourish through that short-term uh, short period. Um, that, that's the key that I would recommend. Seek to understand, 
to, and not be afraid to um, be a, a partner in that short-term challenge um, to yeah. get to the long-term opportunity. Yeah, and we do talk a lot about that, right? We're grounding ourselves with the customer. Are there any yeah. even really practical, um, um, you know, very approachable tips that you could offer and how to um, how to ground yourself with customer when you are trying to, to um, get them on board for the long-term solution? Yeah, I, I think um, I always go back to empathy. I'm sorry, but like, just ask the questions. <laughs> yeah. So, so part of part of developing empathy and part of doing that is the art of asking questions. And so, asking questions initially, like, what are your, you know, simply and directly, what are your objectives for the year? What are the what have you communicated to your team? What do, what are you required to deliver to your 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 senior leaders? Um, how are you um, compensated? Sometimes compensation plans are driving, uh, driving behavior, driving anxiety and, and, and need to drive uh, results. Um, what keeps you up at night? All of these types of questions um, are, are the beginning, but then delivering on those small wins, you know, being, being responsible and reliable, following up, following through. So they trust you. And once you gain that trust and they know that you're genuinely um, interested in helping them, not just interested in getting your results, then they will lean uh, closer onto you and, and, and um, bring you into their, their circle to, to help execute the, those challenges. I love that, that's wonderful. All right, we've got a few more. Um, what happens to modern companies that don't place emphasis on customer success? Uh, thank you, Andrew, for that question. Andrew, I think modern companies who don't, it, it catches up to them eventually. So they may, they may focus on that. They may have an excellent uh, retention right now and say, you know what, we don't need customer success. Uh, our product delivers. But I believe that over time that will catch up. And you need to remember that um, customer success is not about retention. In fact, that's one of my pet peeves is when think, people think of customer success as, a re, as purely a retention tool. I can always grow my customers and, and get more re revenue and get, you know, net net positive revenue out of them. And so whether it's, um, I think it's about shifting the mindset to say, it's not about retention. Even if you have high retention, how can you engage more deeply with your customers to drive better expansion and growth within those customer base um, and, and, um, and see the, 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 that long-term um, benefit come out of it as well. Especially I'll say, you know, you know, there's, in the moment, there's some concerns that companies might pull back under the, the current um, circumstances with various things happening in our world today. That's even a more important time to have customer success because the simple fact of the matter is it's, it's cheaper and easier to retain a customer than it is to find a new customer. And so when, when companies start to hunker down and pull back, they're gonna focus more and more on their existing customer base and maximizing that revenue and that's where customer success can be um, of value. Mm. Great question. Knocking them out of the park, Dave. This is great. Uh, we got a few. Got a few more for you, if that's all right. All right let's do it. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have another question. Oh, this comes from Liz. This is a great one. Um, as a customer support employee, what can I do to bring more customer success to my organization? Um, their department needs more resources. So coming from kind of a bootstrap position, which I think a lot of folks in startups can can empathize with. Yeah. So first of all, I think it was Liz, right? Yeah. Um, Liz, you uh, thank you. I mean, that's another key partner um, team to customer success is that customer support team and uh, their ability to deliver on their role of, of being able to answer those questions and solve those in a, in a quick manner is really important. Um, I think the best thing is to, again, bring data to the table. A lot of times we, um, we talk about new resources that are needed and, it, and it, there's not a business case behind it. So the three business cases that we always talk about from a, from a customer success uh, perspective is, one, can I reduce churn or increase retention? That's, that's the baseline everybody, as I talked about, everybody thinks about. Second, can I increase expansion? And two, can we, can we deliver to our customers in a more efficient and effective way that they'll get more long-term success? And so building the business case to, to your leaders around uh, those three um, aspects and, and using data in that regard, I think yeah. is the best way to go and make that case to, to start building a customer success team. Great answer. All right, wonderful. Um, let's see here. Great. 
So this is from Jeff Reynolds from the rq and chat. He says, um, do you have any advice on how to reapproach a slam door in your face customer? <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, that's, that's, oh man. All the CSMs out there are, are um, you know, cringing right now. We've because all been we there. We've all been through it, right? <laughs> um, I was on a call at 11.30 last night with a customer in Singapore that, that was uh, going through some challenges. And, and again, I think that the, the, the key there is to be um, professionally persistent in demonstrating your desire to help them. Um, and it's also being creative because sometimes we may think that somebody is not engaging with us and we may assume that the reasons are one reason when it may be another. So for example, sometimes we may think that a customer who's not engaging, they're not interested. They just may be tired. Uh, I mean, they just must be in a, they may be in a stressful situation and they may not have time. Um, and so we encourage our team to be creative in, in um, trying to, to engage with others um, and around that leader or that individual on their team trying to, and then trying to build up to showing value back to that leader. So sometimes it's going from top down, but sometimes it's driving value from the bottom up from the end users and, and the regular users and, and um, taking the load off that, that leader that's, that's not engaging. Um, and there's, there's a lot of different ways. I think part of the art of customer success is figuring out how to engage with a customer that's really difficult yeah. to engage. Um, and so that's, that's part of the art um, of, of a great customer success ma uh, manager is to be creative in how to, how to, how to connect with them and, and deliver to their needs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any personal stories you care to share about how you kind of overcame that, uh, that hurdle? Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, um, I, th I, I guess what I would say is like, one thing is I always say embrace, there's always customers out there that, um, I, that are difficult to engage with, even from a personality standpoint. Um, and maybe they're, we feel like they're always angry or they're always upset. Um, the one thing that I would say is embrace those, those individuals. Um, it's a, one thing if it's a silent person, somebody who's silent and won't engage. There's another one where they are um, very difficult, if that makes sense. But I always say that the most, um, embrace your most vocal customers because they're the ones who really care. Yeah. They're the ones who want to want to engage. And some of the best relationships that I have as, as a, in my professional career have been with um, former clients who during periods of time, they were just really difficult. And I just felt like that we were, um, we were pounding our heads against the wall trying to, to deliver to them. And it was those individuals that for a period of time, anytime I received a phone call or an email, it was like, oh. <laughs> I don't want to answer that email because I don't want to talk to him. But again, it was that persistence. It's about saying, Hey, I can take it. Let me, let me, you know, bring, bring your feedback to me. I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to really seek to understand. And then I'm going to do everything in, in my power to rally the, the troops on our team to come and deliver for you. And those turnaround moments, they're magical mm. because then you've, once you've turned around an individual like that, they are a long-term loyalist. They are the ones that will be an advocate long term. Those, those are the individuals that to this day I can look back and say, well, once was a really rocky relationship. Now are long term actually friendships, professional friendships that, that you can be proud of. And so be persistent, um, seek to understand and then um, be, be really um, relentless about delivering to their needs. Excellent advice. All right. I think we've got time for uh, just a few more. Yeah. Um, what is some uh, some advice for offboarding a customer gracefully so that they might come back one day? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, and that's really important. Um, our, our company um, value or mission statement is building relationships that last. Mm. Um, and that's really important. We try to think about that in everything we do and it looks at our lenses. But there's some times where it, there is a hard, you know, at any time and throughout my, my career, I've seen where there's really hard breakups, if you will. And um, you have to realize that, that, this, that it's a small world and that you can deliver, you can, um, you can build as much credibility on how you, um, how you offboard a customer with class yeah. and dignity and respect and graciousness. Um, as it is of how you engage with them at the beginning. So I almost think offboarding is as important as onboarding. Um, and 
you, if you do it right, that will be the case. They will come back because you, a lot of times it's not a personality, it's a business reason. And, um, and when you show your true character as a company, um, then th that will, you know, what goes around comes around. And I believe in karma in that, in that case, um, is certainly when you offboard a customer. What a great answer. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go for another one if that's okay. Um, really, really popular chat. This is wonderful. Uh, so Ooh. I have one from Dave Harris from the Q and a chat that says we often have to get multiple entities to say yes in order to win the sale. Uh, for example, our prospect client will say, well, if you get my customers to support you, then yes. Do you have any advice for them? Um, great question, Dave. You know, I think th this sounds like, I, if I understood right, you're talking about the sell, trying to, get, trying to get a deal done and having all these things. I think it's important to really understand and focus I on what your ideal customer profile is and do a lot of, of diligence in there. So... Um, one, in, in order to do that, one of the ways to do that is to really look at your current customer base and see, understand your, what your most successful customers are doing and what their profile is, and then take infuse that knowledge back into the sales and marketing group. If you have a very, very strong defined um, ideal customer profile and you have a lot of conviction around that, that will reduce the number of cycles on the sales cycle to, to understand whether you should close that deal or not. Um, you might come through and it doesn't align. And the question is, it doesn't align to our criteria. We're not going to close it because we know it's a bad fit cu um, customer. We've done a, a great job over the last couple of years, even in our company of doing that. It's changed the dynamics of our of that process significantly from uh, and making that more streamlined because we we have conviction around who our ideal customer uh, profile is. And and we we don't need as many um, one off approvals uh, in that yeah, regard. Certainly. All right, and I think we've got time for one last question. I love this one. So um, customer success sounds similar to sales with many overlapping skills and objectives. What advice would you give to someone who can't decide which career they would enjoy more? Uh, thank you, Brian. Love that question, Brian. So the, here's how I look at it. Let me see if I can articulate it right. Uh, a good sales uh, person is very good about having sales conversations. They're typically motivated by, by the sale, by money. Um, the best sales reps are very, very good at relationships. Um, they are able to take their skill set and their natural ability to have great conversations and close a deal. And they're able on top of that to be able to develop genuine, authentic relationships that help influence that sale and, and that last beyond the sale. On the other hand, a, great, a, a good customer success manager, it, their core is more about relationships. They love to engage with relationships. They love to see them get value. They love to be in the trenches to help them, to deliver for them, to engage with them. The best customer success managers also have the ability to have sales conversations. So you've got this di dichotomy where, um, where um, there, it's kind of this yin-yang dichotomy that, um, that I, I think you got to see where, where is your skill set? Where is your natural core? Are you, are, do you really get motivated by sales? And, um, and, and, and don't, um, uh, or do you really get at your core, are you motivated by this daily in the trenches, long-term relationship? And that is to me is the driving force. Both sides do both, yeah. but it's where your strengths are that, um, that I think I would, I would land is, is focusing them based on those, those characteristics. Yeah. Awesome advice. I know for me, it was about finding what fatigued me less, you know, what yeah. got me the most excited and just paying attention. I think um, Christine Volden may have been talking about like, you know, writing down or like journaling. Um, and uh, it was really about how I felt at the end of my day and what motivated me and made me feel energized and what really dragged me down. Um, yeah. Kind of paying attention to those small feelings really um, helped help me decide on, on a career path and feel very convicted about. So. Oh, I, I love that. And I, I agree. There's, there's thing. I would say that the, the key thing is, is that we see customer success teams engaged in that, in that sales conversation um, more and more, yeah. but more, morally, mainly, uh, mainly uh, owning the renewal and expansion. And so regardless, I think you need to develop some, some skills, skill sets, skill, uh, skill sets in that regard. It's a tongue twister. And, uh, <laughs> and I think customer success managers are the best solution sellers out yeah. there because they're, if you're delivering to their needs, there's this natural um, um, expansion and growth and retention of, of, of a customer relationship. 
Awesome. Well, Dave, it has been um, a total career highlight for me to be interviewing today. I'm sure everybody in the audience has taken so much away from our chat. Um, any final thoughts you'd like to leave us with before we uh, conclude for the day? It's been a pleasure to be here, Kristen. Thank you. It's been fun. I, I've appreciated the questions from you and the audience. Um, again, huge uh, shout out to Nutshell and the team there. Very excited about what you're doing. And, and just in general, um, don't, you know, engage in customer success, engage in the community, invest in it. Um, it that's a big, a big area and you will never regret investing in customer success. And if there's anything we can do, if I can do personally um, to help you in your journey in customer success, happy to help. And, and our company client success is always happy to help as well. But thanks for having me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.